it's Scott again with Camille's harem. Today I have a bit of confession. I've been traumatized again, which is pretty easy when it comes to soul leveling in my opinion. While that might not be the main focus of the story, our first introductory episodes really sets the world going and introduces us to the characters. We get to see him at his weakness, our MC, get traumatized by giant stone statue gods and live onwards from that. This is what leads to my feelings on the matter. I originally read Solo Leveling as the comic was releasing some years ago and was traumatized then. And now as I watch the entire Touch and God arc happen again, those feelings of fear, awe, and panic started to resurface. To be honest, I'm super impressed. To have a story that can give me PTSD from its very inception is just a cool concept to me. This is a writing channel, at least that's what we like to call ourselves, and it wouldn't be much of a Camille's harem video without a bit of widely analysis of why this is the case. There's a number of reasons I can see that makes the intro into Soul Leveling work so well. One, there's a sense of hopelessness that is created by forcing our characters into this situation. The story goes to extreme lengths to establish the power rankings of both the characters and the dungeon portals that are in this story. The anime goes the extra mile by showing us the battles of the S-Class fighters and their capabilities and just how epic and crazy their abilities are. Then we focus on the bottom tier adventurers, the ones that only have the power for whatever reason to challenge C-Class dungeons and below. It might be tough, but they make it work. Then, when they're faced with a true S-Class challenge, we already know just how screwed they are. It creates this massive sense of hopelessness, and as a watcher, it creates a sense of curiosity. As you're watching it, you have to ask yourself, this is the first and second episode of this series. There's no way they can kill off our main character already. How does he get out of this? Adding to all of that hopelessness are all of the characters' reactions to what's going on, and we have a good mix of different reactions to look at. Our orange-haired love interest goes into a trauma-induced coma, basically, and is almost entirely useless to everyone around her. Some of the people try to bully their way out of the situation, or just start praying for help from a higher being. It gets even worse when they get through the first two challenges, and the other characters are given the option to escape. Even though they could be safe if they follow the rules, they're not going to take that chance. This raises the stakes for those that remain, and then you see all of them run or are forced to go. This leaves our MC abandoned and alone to face the horrors of the statue's might. We get to see some of the best character moments from our main character right here. I like where the story goes from here on, but the strongest character growth happens here early on for Sung Woo. Unlike a lot of the other characters, he knows that he's weak. He doesn't underestimate himself, though he could definitely do to gain a little bit more confidence, but that will come in later. He understands, though, that panicking in a situation, no matter how hard that is, isn't the right thing to do. He starts solving the problem in front of him. It's not until everyone leaves that his mask breaks and he begins to curse his life and the other adventurers as he too wanted to live and survive, which is very relatable in my opinion. Sung Woo's journey though is only just beginning. Now he has more to deal with going forward, specifically an unexplained skill that allows him to level up and grow stronger that's been given to him for some unknown mysterious reason. I don't know, I'd be a little paranoid personally. Until next time, this has been Camille's Harem. Subscribe, like, and comment below. Okini!